Welcome back to Bit Break. In this video, I'm going to recommend you some books based on true stories from history that you might not already know. So some of them are inspired by specific, strange but true events. Some of them are set in periods of history that aren't as commonly talked about, or at least not on the history curriculum that a lot of us here in the UK grew up with. So a lot of these parts of history I really didn't know anything about before. So starting with one of those strange but true stories, I have here one of the most most beautiful books I have ever seen. This is The Lamplighters by Emma Stonex. It's just gorgeous. Everyone at work is so excited about this book. I was actually sent some fudge to go with it because the book is set in Cornwall, so I would show you, but I already ate it. But I can show you a picture of the book break dog Hippo looking very adorable next to it. The Lamplighters is inspired by a true mystery, the Flannan Isles mystery, when three lighthouse keepers vanished mysteriously without a trace from a lighthouse. So Emma Stonex has taken that mystery and created this whole incredible story around it. She's moved the action to Cornwall in the 1970s instead of Scotland in 1900, but you will find the same mysterious disappearance there, along with some of the most haunting details, like the stopped clocks in the lighthouse. And Emma Stonex has also added in this parallel timeline 20 years later, where we follow the women left behind. Kololo Hill by Nima Shah is set during the expulsion of Ugandan Asians from Uganda, which is not a period of history I ever learnt about. So in 1972, a decree was issued, all Ugandan Asians must leave the country within 90 days, taking only what they could carry. They had to give up all of their money and never return. So against this terrible backdrop, Nima Shah tells the story of a family forced to leave their home and move to England, a young married couple who have to give up the family business they've been working so hard to save, and the husband's mother who has to say goodbye to the house that has been her home for decades. But also hanging over the family's heads is this terrible secret, threatening to tear them apart. The War of the Poor by Eric Vuillard is a nice short little book that takes us behind the scenes of one particular brutal uprising in history that isn't often taught. So it's set in 16th century Europe during the Protestant Reformation. Peasants are still being told that they will achieve equality in heaven, but they start to ask themselves, why can't we have equality here now on earth? So this book is about the violent struggle that followed, escalated by a man called Thomas Munzer, who addressed the poorest members of society directly, asking them to think about why a god who apparently loves the poor seemed so much to favour the rich. I recently read The Shadow King by Marza Mengiste, which is really interesting because I remember when I was learning history, which was a long time ago, we were taught about the Abyssinian crisis, but very much from the European perspective. Whereas in this book, we get to meet a group of Ethiopian soldiers, men and women, who all contribute to the resistance in so many different ways. And the book really explores the horror of the Italians' treatment of the Ethiopians. Another part of history that I really didn't know anything about is the Japanese annexation of Korea. And so I recently read Pachinko by Min Jin Lee, which was fantastic. It's a multi-generational story. We get to follow a family, a Korean family, who move to Japan. It's absolutely heartbreaking, but wonderful. We learn so much about how the relationship between Korea and Japan changes and adapts through the generations and what life was like for Koreans living in Japan through those decades. Okay, an author you will love if you like reading about particular strange little events from history is Hannah Kent, and I've got two books here to show you. So Burial Rites is about Agnes Magnus Dottir, who was the last person to be formally executed in Iceland before the death penalty was abolished. So this book imagines her final months. She's sent to live on this farm, and it's all about the isolation that she faces with this stark landscape and the family that she's living with being too afraid to even come near her. And Hannah Kent is also the author of The Good People, which is set in Ireland in 1825 and is inspired by the true story of a woman who was charged with abusing a young boy in her care, but she insisted that the boy was not her grandson at all, but a changeling. Emma Donoghue is also wonderful at these kind of books, inspired by real stories that captured her imagination. I've got just two of her many here to show you. So Frog Music is inspired by the murder of a crossdresser called Jenny Bonnet in San Francisco. Francisco. She was murdered in 1876 and in this book Emma Donoghue imagines her last few days of life and gives her own answer to this actually unsolved mystery. 
And The Wonder is set in 1850s Ireland. It's about a young girl who claims to have stopped eating entirely, but is miraculously still alive. And we follow the nurse who is sent to investigate the truth of this story. And this one's inspired by quite a few different stories of similar fasting girls. For example, Molly Fancher, who was an American girl who claimed to have abstained from eating for 14 years. The Mercies by Kieran Milward Hargrave is inspired by the true story of a terrible storm in 1617 that completely devastated the male population of the Norwegian island of Vardia and rumours of witchcraft surrounding the women soon began to spread. So Kieran Milward Hargrave was inspired by the story of this storm and the terrible witch trials that followed in which 80 women were burned as witches and she brings these women to life imagining this community that existed for so long as a place of women. On Wings of Eagles is a classic Ken Follett thriller inspired by the true story of a real-life rescue of two Americans captured in Iran with the US government refusing to help. So Ken Follett has brought to life a fictionalised version of the real-life colonel who came out of retirement to lead a secret raid to rescue these prisoners and the terrifying chase to the Turkish border that followed. The Dead Girls by Jorge Ibaguengoitia is inspired by the gritty, gruesome, real-life story of two serial-killing sisters, Delfina and Maria de Jesus Gonzalez, who owned a brothel and were eventually charged with the murder of at least 80 women. This book is a dark comedy, very dark, as you can tell by that premise. It's presented as a police report and it ultimately exposes the justice system as hopelessly broken. And finally, A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James was the Man Booker Prize winner in 2015. It's inspired by the true story of the attempted assassination of Bob Marley in Jamaica in 1976. I've included this one on the list, even though that is obviously a more well-known story, just because of the level of detail that Marlon James has brought to life in this book that people may not know. This book doesn't just tell the story of that attempted assassination, it brings this period of history in Jamaica startlingly, brutally to life. It is a very gritty and violent novel. It spans so many different characters. I think there are 76 or more different voices, each of them so distinct. It's an incredible achievement. So for more historical fiction recommendations, I will link here to a whole playlist of all of our historical fiction videos that we've made, and I would love to hear your recommendations for books like these based on parts of history that you might not have known. See you next time.